the Garden Rock National Park, we've got three parks, one here in Wilderness, which um, is here where we are, the other camp as well, some areas around the lakes areas, up in Coatfield there's a forest area as well that makes up part of the wilderness section, and then there's the Sedgefield Park as well, and then there's Nisna. The, the estuarine areas and the forest areas as well, there's Titikama as well, the, for, the, the marine protected area and I think 2020, with its lockdown and all, has actually given many of us the opportunity to reflect and to take our lives into um, consideration again and to see how we can better um, our lives in terms of challenging situations. So we usually have Sand Parks Week in September and many of us thought that it was the year was gone and we weren't going to be able to do it and yet we are privilege to actually uh, celebrate Sand Parks Weeks once again with all our um, communities and the people of South Interesting Africa. Interesting that the Reconnecting Society forms an integral part of the vision of South African National Parks, which reads, a world-class system of national parks reconnecting and inspiring society. So we hope that you find today a reconnecting and an expiring experience. Thank you. But today it's a day to just say, listen, we in nature, let's forget everything as the youth um, surrounding this beautiful park. And I'm here to just talk about what we do in, as sand parks, as the Social Economic Transformation Office. Um, what is it that we do to give back to our community? So today, my message to all of you as our beneficiaries, as our community members in and around the park is that there's this phase that we're all going through as the youth where we are like, we are so tired. We are tired of what's going on in and around us. But what I'm here to say is we cannot be tired as the youth. We are the ones who must take the race and run. We cannot be tired when there's neighbors of ours that are starving. We cannot be tired when there's community members that need our advice. We cannot be tired when we have skills that we can pass on to everyone that is around us. We are in no way whatsoever have the right to say we are tired. Let's be tired and keep it moving as the youth. We are the ones with the energy. We are the ones with the strength to do all of these things. What I'm here to say today is that let us use this time that we have to make meaningful change in our communities. And it is not only the government's prerogative to create opportunities, it is also up to us to stand up and see what opportunities can we create and not have to wait for somebody to create opportunities for us. We all here born with the gift to do something in our communities born with the gift to do so much more. Let us multiply our talents as the youth. The time is now not to fall apart, to, but to build in our communities, to build wherever we go, to be a living testimony of this energy that we've been given. With that being said, thank you so much for this opportunity and thank you for coming. something about and the second thing you can do nothing about it all right the first thing the way you lived your life before 
you had a choice. But now, with COVID, you don't have a choice. There's a lot that falls under the second category, so I want to hone into the second one, and that's okay. But one thing that helps us to deal with that is creating distractions for yourself. Create a for your space. Get yourself a space in your home, in your garden. Create that space. When last, when last have you felt the wind in your hair? When last have you stood like this as young people, just carefree? When last have you felt the grass under your feet? Scope eight is color. Scope it eight. When last have you felt the sand under your feet? Or are you just sitting at home doing nothing? Doing mind work. Doing mind work. What next? What am I going to do? This COVID, this COVID affect everybody. Blame COVID. My question to you is, what are you going to do? In this time that we have a chance to make a difference, we can't go out to market, um, we can't accept bookings, what are we going to do? And it's actually been a, such an exciting time for us at the, at the tourism office because we really had to look, we had the time to look and say, what are we doing now? What do we want to do? Where do we want to go? And how do we do it differently? So really, it has been, yes, bad, but they say every cloud has a silver lining. And it's been a really interesting time for us. Um, we've had to look and say, if people aren't going to come into our info offices, how are we going to get information to them? If I can't go to ITB Berlin, how am I going to market to the German market? And so online has become actually such a way for us to get more bang for our buck. To the point where we've even closed some of our brick and mortar offices to be able to rather give an online service for people via an app or a website or a, just a kiosk where there's a, a tablet. Have a beach to ourselves in a season instead of sharing it with all these holiday makers. And then think about how we're going to preserve that beach, how we're going to keep it clean so when the tourists do come back to make it beautiful. So it's really a chain and one affects the other. Every single part of that affects the other part. And the domestic market has actually come back very nicely. Um, our ocean side, our, our riverside, all the traditional holiday places are very much in demand. And although we find many, many inquiries coming through, the bookings don't necessarily reflect that because of that price thing. But the great news, I think, for our area, in for Georgian wilderness and the garden route in general is, I think our time has come because we might not have these huge attractions where people can just rock up and do groups and groups and groups. But people now are looking for something they can do themselves, by themselves, keep safe, and be out in nature. And there isn't anything in nature that we don't have in this area um, that another destination can provide. And I mean, our national park is just a prime example of that. You know, we've got rivers, lakes, forests, mountains, everything your heart could desire and you can enjoy it at your own pace the message today is merely directed to the youth if you go today and you have not heard what has been said shame to you because even when Pumla stood here I think she was here to talk about Zen Parks and what they're doing but everything changed and it's about the youth today so if you had not got the message today that is mainly directed at you, I'm, I'm shameful to you because this has been your day and it's your day to learn. We were invited by the Naisna municipality to also come and see them when they were launching their, also their festival campaign, which I, I find it very intriguing. They call it home away from home or far away from home, something like that. They mimic things like your buildings in the Western Cape to Greece. And they mimic our mountains in the Karoo uh, to Copenhagen, to Colorado. A lot of things. I think it's up now on their social media platforms. I encourage you to go and just and, and view that, uh, that, that video. It's actually very intriguing to say, why do we want to go outside? 
when all these places that are there outside, we also then also have them here in our own our own places. And then today we are here as the region. We are also launching the the 15th annual SA Parks Week, and uh, we are glad that you are here with us to actually celebrate this event. Normally, most people know this event to be happening in September, like Sandra explained earlier on, and it's well known as the Mahala Week. But uh, due to COVID-19, we have moved it to the 16th to the 20th of November 2020. Uh, in other places, you will see that it's gone up to the 22nd, which includes your weekend. But what does this mean? What does, it, what does this mean to a normal person? It means that as Sand Parks, we have opened our gates to our domestic people, our South African citizens, to visit our parks, to come for a day of day activities, things like your game, your game, your, your, your bed viewing, cycling, walking around the park, praying, picnicking, come and enjoy with your families, your friends and your relatives. And one may ask and say, why only the citizens? This is for our South African citizens to visit our parks. Because again, like what Nandi explained earlier on, as well as a, an a SET <laughs> Pumla also indicated earlier on, to say we have a mandate as Saint Parks that we need to fulfill. We are here to promote accessibility to our parks, and we are here to create relations with you. More so, we are fulfilling the, the vision of Saint Parks, which is reconnecting and inspiring our societies. And we know that our communities play a pivotal role in our parks. And as said by our ME or um, our, our CE, which is our CEO of, of St. Parks yesterday, to say our parks belong to our communities. If you go to the workshops where the communities are, you will always hear them saying, nothing for us without us. So these are your parks and they are for you to enjoy. So if you do not come and you do not utilize this opportunity, you are really missing out. So it is a community support and we are reaching out to our communities. And again, I think also Joan touched on this one to say it's happening at an opportune time when our president on Tuesday also announced the opening of our international borders. And we're all celebrating and saying, yay, our borders are gonna be opened again for our international guests. But we are forgetting the little bit as well to say, we also have a role to play in terms of domestic tourism. We must change the face of, the, of tourism in the area. And it means with the international borders also being open, that we must strengthen our marketing and we advertise more of our parks and what our parks can offer. And other tourism sectors outside of St. Parks, because we've got a lot to offer. If you would have seen, I'm not sure if you were able to see also in our, I don't know if it's a slogan, in our garden roots at Bena, it says adventure is in our nature. So as the garden roots, we must start practicing that and we must actually show our people and showcase what we have in the region. And we cannot lie again to ourselves about the devastating impact that COVID-19 has had on us as individuals and as well as in tourism. That is why we have to come in full force and claim that which coronavirus has taken away from us. And yes, there are good things that we learn from this, and also there are bad things, but I choose to lean more on the positive things that coronavirus has <laughs>